midnight millennial cowboys here you know none, none, of, none of those lame gen xers here yeah. latchkey kids complaining about uh you know about the man and <laughs> <laughs> do you remember like coke did this like gen x marketing thing where they tried to market coke to gen xers and they had these like dead soulless cartoon characters on their cans <laughs> No, I don't remember that at all. Oh, when was man. this? It was like in the nineties. Okay. Uh, it was a while ago. Um, but it just like they looked like uh, Mike Judge cartoons or something <laughs> being drawn on these cans. I I, I, I want to look it up, but it, that's not for good. Uh, that's not for good television or podcast. Right, or right. Yeah. If I if I could share my screen, I would. I would, but I don't want to work on the fly like that. Yeah. Um, no. But yeah, we're it's. It's the Christmas season, you know, we're in the spirit, in the holiday spirit, Christmas spirit. And we're going to be talking about uh, Muppet Christmas Carol, which, you know, and Christmas Carol more broadly, because there's been a million of these things, you know. When I was looking up uh, Christmas Carol movies, there were some I hadn't even heard of where I was going, oh my gosh, like there was a an animated one Netflix produced a couple years ago and... Yeah, I didn't know that either. Yeah, like there was one that came out in 2020 that was a. Uh, I saw a little bit of it, and it wasn't really the story per se. I guess. Uh, I guess. Uh, hold on a second. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I guess overarchingly, it was the Christmas Carol, but they did like a much darker kind of r-rated version of it mm -hmm. and i think it was simply called christmas carol you know like so there's no way to differentiate like um it was 2020 and it, it was odd it was an odd uh uh little film where uh the ghosts one i think jacob marley jacob marley is dragged into this interdimensional christmas sort of place where it's all it is it's like a snowy dark depressing christmas tree farm essentially and he's given the task to uh, find absolution for his old partner. Uh, it was it was interesting, but I was just like, I don't want to sit through three hours of this. Um, well, just did, to, you, go did, ahead. You, did you see there's a new one uh, with Will Ferrell that's out right now? Is that what spirit it is? Yeah, it's a Christmas carol. Okay, I've seen advertisements for that all over town and Los Angeles. I'm currently in Florida right now visiting the folks, but... Um, yeah, all over town they're spirited with Will Ferrell and uh, Ryan Reynolds, and you know that's a deterrent enough for me not to uh, watch the watch. Yeah, I think it's is. a musical, but I think it's like a spin on it. You know, I didn't realize that. Okay, yeah, I guess like like, a, I, it's I, not straight Christmas Carol. It's like, um, it's like they they're, uh, it's like Jacob Marley and the ghosts are helping redeeming souls, and it just okay. kind of takes it and runs with it in a different direction. Well, what connection does Jacob Marley have with other people? Because there's no Scrooge here, you said, right? Oh, Will Ferrell is Scrooge. Oh, oh okay. So there is a Scrooge. And right. uh let's see, who's Jacob Marley? Patrick Page. Is it a is it a, a, a period film? I don't know. It's one Ooh, that I wish I wish I'd known it was sooner because I would have watched it. Um but uh but it's a musical. A lot of these are musicals, you know? Yeah, it's true. It okay. lends itself to that medium. But I, I was looking at, I just remember looking at the poster and thinking, gosh, Will Ferrell's looking old, you know? You know they airbrushed the hell out of out of him and maybe even Ryan Reynolds, so it was hard for me to tell from the, I've only seen the posters where they're like in mid stride yeah. on skates, yes. you know? <laughs> yeah, that's the one I'm talking about is I just think yeah. it looks kind of, uh, like a little worse for wear. Yeah, I guess I should have guessed from the title "Spirited," but I it it just didn't occur to me. It didn't it didn't uh, seem it Christmas. wouldn't have occurred to me either. "Spirited," the holiday spirit. I don't know. Yeah, Christmas yeah exactly. Right. You know, it's yeah. pretty generic. Um, but uh, but Muppet Christmas Carol came out in 1992. Yeah, I saw it in the theater. What about you? I did too. Yeah, I and I was jazzed to go see it because i loved muppets and i loved christmas carol in fact yeah. mickey's christmas carol was my favorite thing when i was a little kid that was my introduction to the story me too i would watch the the muppet not muppet mickey's christmas carol over and over again 
Um, my parents it's... told told me I drove them nuts. And uh, I remember my dad telling me, he goes, I, I remember being out of town for business and calling home and I could hear it in the background when I was talking to your mom. <laughs> it's like, he's watching it again. <laughs> There's something about rewatching something over and over and over again when you're very young and mm-hmm. you don't get sick of it. Yeah, kids, they, I, cause I remember uh, being able to kind of fixate on something and kids, they, they all seem to pick that one thing that, I just want to watch this over and over again. Well, wouldn't you want to try something new? Nope. Nope. No thanks. I was the same way. Maybe everybody else was too. I, 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 last... I find that with a lot of kids. They they fixate. There's more that one movie. They just – it's yeah. like the, the song stuck in your head. Like they need to process it somehow. <clears throat> the last time I remember being that way about a film was uh, a year after its theatrical release um, – because that's what we had to deal with with v- the VHS era. You had to wait a year to get it in your hands. Oh yeah. Uh, was episode one Star Wars was Phantom Menace. Mm. I yeah. I saw that over and over and over and over again. Because you loved Jar Jar Binks that much. You know I was you know I was twelve when that came out and um, I was basically the perfect age for yeah, that because it, that cause it had cool weird. you know sword fights and the pod race was really cool. I would check out of the, the, the bureaucracy, what felt like 45 minutes of it. It was probably maybe like 15, 20. Uh, I checked out of the, 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 the Senate hearings and stuff when I was a kid, but I used to check out of, and we're going to talk about that with Muppet Christmas Carol. I used to check out of, of a lot of things when I was a kid, favorite movies of mine that I'd watch over and over. There was always five minutes or so where I'd be like, okay, off Yep, my brain. I would do that too. There would be the part of the movie I really wanted to see. And I would sit through the whole thing and there would be parts. This would be a movie that would be a favorite of mine. There'd be parts that I didn't particularly care for, but I would just be waiting for that, that special part of the film that I wanted to get to, you know, um, uh, it's, it's interesting. (laughs) It's interesting when you're a kid, how, how you sort of, there's stuff you might not understand and you just go, well, this is above my pay grade. I, I assume it must be pretty good. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's in here for a reason. They know more than me. They're the ones making the film. I'm just a stupid kid, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, You're a kid. Kids are but, stupid. But uh, Scrooge is played by oh. Mike O'Kane in this. Um, and, uh, you know, perfect casting, I would say, for Scrooge. I, yeah, I think it's really good casting. Yeah. Um, going back to the past uh, and get Carter he's actually if you read the book you realize that he's actually these people he's murdering are uh, are his childhood friends but but uh, Michael Caine does not do that this time around during the past segments (laughs) you mean Mike Hodges wasn't on the set for this (laughs) (laughs) I can't believe Mike Hodges died three days ago I thought that dude was dead like five years ago I I know I had no idea (laughs) I had no clue he was still alive I could have sworn if you asked me, I was like, yeah, Mike Hodges, he died like in 2019 or something. Nope. I guess not. <laughs> I guess Malloy would have set us straight. Uh, well, um, Malloy, I, I told because he posted that and and I, I called him and was just like, didn't Mike Hodges die two years ago? I was like, I too thought he died two years ago. <laughs> I was shocked. Even Malloy was like, oh, that guy's that guy pushing up daisies. <laughs> all right michael kane and scrooge very good casting I think. yeah very good casting and you've got the muppets uh were you a big muppets fan growing up i think so yeah. i think so um I, I i i guess not so fanatical that i could say for sure um but the muppets were certainly a very big part of my life at that time yeah. in 92 and and well into the 90s uh yeah no muppet christmas carol was a favorite um disney had acquired the muppets at that point at least to showcase at their parks and being somebody from miami uh there's a big disney culture here uh that now i woefully regret um and so the muppets were a big part of the parks as well so they had the they had a they have a a, like a 10 minute whatever it is a 3d attraction with the muppets Mm. they still do it's still there to this day um, so yeah, no, the Muppets were a big part of my life when yeah, I was, I think people our age, they were just hard to avoid. Like, yes, they were pretty ubiquitous. They used to come on, um, 
this was, I guess, to do with cable. Uh, Nickelodeon used to have them, uh, used to play the old 70s show, The Muppet Show or whatever, yep. uh, around 7 o'clock. Like once the Kitty Fair, because the Muppets were actually meant for adults, from what I understand, sort of. I mean, it's not like raunchy humor or nothing like that. It was meant for something for everybody to enjoy, the parents and the kids. Yeah. And so Nickelodeon, before SNCC would come on, um, which was their adult programming or whatever you would call it. It was that. for the, it was for Snick was for kids who wear their hats backwards and have the, <laughs> the sunglasses and some, <laughs> stuff like radical and would have uh, like yeah. Bart Simpson on their skateboard. <laughs> yeah. No, all right. I'll, I'll take that back then. So it was for preteens or something. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if, well, anyways, this, who cares? The point is, is like around seven o'clock, the Muppet show would come on. And so I would catch the first five minutes of that before the channel would abruptly change to something else. I don't know, because our cable provider or whatever it was that, that didn't. So I would have Nickelodeon up until a certain point, like at 7.05, it would shut off and switch to some infomercial type thing. We have 10 minutes left. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, no, like the, the Muppets were ubiquitous when I was a kid. Yeah, they were. I, I remember watching the Muppet show. And, you know, it's kind of fun to go back and watch that because there's all these old entertainers on there who are no longer with us, like, you know, Peter Sellers uh, or people who are still with us who are just old, like Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper. <laughs> you know, that was one that I remember very distinctly. Uh, but, yeah, you know, and I feel like this was kind of the last great Muppets movie. Um Cause oh yeah, it seemed like the Muppet movies that came after this. I may need to uh, do my homework, but well, it, there was. I believe the next one was Muppets in Space, which I never saw. Yeah, it yeah. just it it seemed like okay. After this, you had Muppet Treasure Island, and oh I like, oh, I forgot about Muppet Treasure. I like that one too. Okay, that one. Okay, that I don't know if I saw that one, which is weird because I love Treasure Island. Yeah, um, Muppets from Space, uh, which I never saw uh 1999 never did but then they did like muppet they did a lot of di like ones on tv like muppet wizard of oz with quentin tarantino the quentin's in it yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. but uh and then you know they relaunched it in 2011 and with muppets and muppets most wanted and those are kind oh of, that's right those are those are pretty wretched i think those have been memory hold um uh yeah, Muppets in Space. I remember seeing the poster for that. I, I was kind of too old for that at the time, so yeah, I didn't go see it. Treasure Island. I Treasure Island. I went to go see at a local cinema that always had problems, and they, I guess, the kid manning the projection wasn't paying attention, and so a reel, they didn't change reels on time. So, and it took them forever to get it back together. So we we left, huh. and then I eventually saw it on VHS. But I liked that one. Is the quality worse than Muppet Christmas Carol? I couldn't tell you. It's been many years. Maybe, probably, but you're right. I think you're right. This is like the last classic one. I think this is the last one Jim Henson was a part of. I think Jim was dead by this point. Wasn't really? It? Yeah, I think so. Brian Henson directed this one. Um, because hmm. Jim died in. Well, I'll find out. But uh, but I know Brian directed this one, and Jim's not in it. Like he doesn't do any of the voices. Um, You're right. He died in 1990. Yeah. So, because I remember I was pretty young when he died. Um, and this was I 1992. Wasn't, I mean, I was born in '87. 1990, I probably wasn't. I couldn't tell you if, yeah. if I. Yeah. Um, but uh, but this one it had the one one of the things that I think makes this one so memorable is the uh, songs by Paul Williams um that paul will that little midget can write songs yeah. you know, he's uh <laughs> he's a uh, little midgets a, a bit of a overstatement um but uh yeah he's he's uh he makes he's like he's kind of like i liken him to uh those uh what are they called the shepherd brothers like those br those two brothers that came up with all those good disney jingles Yes, yes. Whatever those guys' names are. Sherman Brothers? I think it's the Sherman Brothers. Sherman, something like that. Yeah, um, but the those guys, they were just like, a, you know, a, 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 a hit machine is what those guys were. Yeah. And Paul Williams is very much the same way. When he's at the capacity of making songs for the Muppets and or, or movies, I guess, um, 
I like his musical career uh, outside of that, but but he's in his element when he's making these Muppet movies for some reason. Yeah, because he's he. This isn't the first one he was involved with. He was in the first one. I remember yeah. him playing. The game. Um, yeah. But yeah, the the songs are great. And yeah, all the songs are bangers, minus uh, maybe one or two. I, I have to hear them again. But all well, of them I know, are good. I know that they cut one, the song uh, when when love is gone. Well, that's a good song too. Yeah, my my but... wife actually gets really mad when we watch it because the the widescreen theatrical one doesn't have it in it. But if you watch it in full frame, it's in it. And she's she's like, I like that song. I want to. That's sing. partially partially why I wanted to do this show because. Uh, I'm currently uh, making a, a, a documentary on basically something about lost media. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm just fascinated by that subject. And I was not even aware up until the day that I told you that I wanted to do this show. So what, a week ago? Yeah. I was not aware that The Love is Gone, the intermediate version of it, because there's the, 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 the end. Um, uh I was not aware that that scene was not in the theatrical version. I did go see the movie mm -hmm. uh, in the theater in 1992, but I guess, you know, like that's a long time ago. Um, uh, I just assumed we got the movie that we got on VHS. And uh, I, I still remember seeing the Dennis the Menace poster outside the theater as we walked in, because that was that was advertising it six months later would come oh, on. We were living in a post Home Alone world. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And uh, so I went to go see Muppet Christmas Carol in the theater, loved it. And then a year later when the VHS came out, uh, uh, that song was in there. Uh, the Love is Gone with uh, Michael Caine's younger self and Michael Caine himself as, as, this, as this ethereal person overlooking his past. And uh, the, 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 his, the leading lady or the, or the love interest, uh, Belle, I think. I'm not sure if her name is Belle in the books. I would assume it is because they always use the term Belle. They always use the name. Yeah, Belle. it's Belle, but, and she's played by Meredith Braun. Meredith Braun. So I, when I saw that at home on VHS in 1993, I just assumed that scene was in the in the movie ver in the in the theatrical version. But that's and and I just learned again a week ago that the studio had removed that scene from the theatrical version because they felt, and I think rightly. Uh, they felt that it was going to bore children, and guess what it did? It bored me. <laughs> and so I, I would switch off whenever on uh, whenever I played the VHS, which was all the time. Yeah, I would switch off during those three minutes or however long that song went, because it's just like it's, it's dealing with something that a four no, a six year old couldn't grasp, which was adult love. Yeah, adult and relationships. It's, and... it's a mature moment in the yeah. film, and. Uh... And, but it's just kind of funny when you watch it without it. It is a bit like Belle died on the way back to her home planet. <laughs> like she just kind of vanishes yeah, yeah. from the film. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it, that's true. No, obviously, it's the movie's better off with it, naturally. Yeah. But it's not something that I would, if if it was removed from the VHS version, which it wasn't, it was not something that I would have missed mm -hmm. as a kid. Yeah. Yeah, no, I absolutely, and um, I think the studio's instincts were probably correct there, yeah. that it would be a moment where kids' eyes would glaze over, because um, it's it's mature. It, it, you know, you're you're here for the Muppets and the puppets and right and all that good stuff. But so the the narrators, we have Gonzo as Charles Dickens, which I thought was a nice touch. I like I like kind of having him anchoring the proceedings. Yeah. Is I mean Gonzo is kind of a the the breakout character I would imagine right? He was for me as a kid. Yeah, yeah, I liked him a lot. Yeah. Oh, I... Muppet Babies. That was another one. Yeah, I watched Muppet Babies a lot. Yeah, me too. Um, in fact, that that that's how I was introduced. Maybe I should resent it for this. That's how I was introduced to Star Wars. Was <laughs> Muppet Babies? Oh, there was a Muppet Baby Star Wars uh, special. I seem to recall seeing that. The way I was introduced to Star Wars, my first bit of Star Wars media was the Ewoks movies. Yeah, I saw those too. I think yeah. I, you know what? I think that was the first thing I saw too. Yeah, the um, Caravan of Courage. And then the other one wouldn't play TV all that often, but when it did, it was a treat because it had more action in it. Oh yeah, Battle for Endor. Mm -hmm. And what, one thing I loved about Battle for Endor was you, you have Caravan of Courage where you have this family struggling to survive against all odds with the Ewoks. 
and then at the beginning of Battle for Endor, they all get killed except the, the girl. God, I, I'd have to, I'd, except for the kids, I guess. Just the girl. Even the her girl, brother. Gets even the eyes. brother dies. <laughs> oh shit! I gotta see that again. Yeah, it's on uh, Disney Plus, I think. Yeah, yeah. And you know go back and on... watch those. Yeah, you know what else is on Disney Plus? Uh, hmm. The full version of the Muppet Christmas Carol. Now it has the full one in widescreen. Apparently, I I didn't check. I meant to watch before this uh, show, but I didn't get a chance. I guess I could go do it afterwards. But yes, apparently this year marked the year where they found the elements and they put it back in the film. Oh, that's so great! Yeah, that they did that. Um, yeah, because that's a uh, you know, because that that's one thing that was always frustrating about the home video releases is you had to watch either the full version but with improper f- framing yeah. or the correct framing, but you missed that one song. You know. Yeah. Um. Also, Stadler and Waldorf playing. <laughs> Marley, Marley Brothers. Marley. Yeah, the Marley Brothers. That was a good touch, too. Uh, just, I loved having that. And Fo- Fozzie is Fozzie Wig. Fozzie Wig, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All um, very good. Yeah, the only, uh, I guess all the other ghosts, uh, I guess they wanted a familiarity w- for uh, Jacob Marley, so they they they, they put the, the two old hecklers. But the other, the three main spirits, they're all new designs. They're yeah. all new new muppets the ghost of christmas past is this kind of cherubic yeah puppet almost kind of creepy it's very know? creepy i used to be creeped out by it as a kid and uh the ghost of christmas present is a big jolly M- muppet character mm. um and uh the way they age him i, I remember thinking that was so sad <laughs> when yeah. i was a kid was he lives 24 hours and he's like an old man by the end i remember going oh that hit kind yeah odd He's uh, he has at that I forget when the book was published, but he has over eighteen hundred siblings. Yes. Uh, if we were to cast, they didn't put this in the movie, but if we were to cast two Muppets as ignorance and want, who would it be? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I, one comes to mind immediately. Animal would be one. Animal, animal and oh. Doctor Teeth. <laughs> Doctor Teeth. Yeah, sure. I mean, the other one has to be female for want. Uh, oh yeah. I guess uh, the, the, the female, the female band member. the Janis Joplin Muppet. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> her, whatever her name is. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were probably wise not to include that. In they movie. rarely ever do in other adaptations, which we'll get into later. Um, yeah, because it's, you know, it's a disturbing moment. <laughs> it is the three, um, the three ghosts with probably very few exceptions that I can't even think of right now, present and of Christmas yet to come, they're always exactly what they are in the novel. Yeah. Christmas, excuse me, present is Father Christmas, Mm -hmm. lookalike, jovial, until he's not. And then, uh, of course, uh, future is always this Grim Reaper. Yeah. Yeah. Figure. always always an ominous scary that's the yeah. one you're always like what are they going to do with that one you know even though it's it's always a variation on the same thing yeah but uh you kind of go okay what are they are they going to go big with it are they going to go subtle you know what it, yeah you know. but the one that always seems to change around because i guess it's it'll be a, too much of a special effect in some cases because in the novel christmas past is it, did you ever see the the jim carrey one yes chris i think that one is close to the novel. It's just this like flame with a with a cap. With well, a, and that's whoop. the thing is put them out, you know. Exactly right. But they rarely do that because I guess it's, you know, it's a special effect. That yeah. You have to do. Whereas the other two, you just get some tall guy in a in a hood. You can get some tall guy to put it, you know, play dress up in a in a green Santa suit, and you're mm-hmm. good. You get Brian um, Blessed to put on a robe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the present, uh, uh, past rather, is the one that they con- ha- always have to change around. Sometimes it's a child, other times it's a woman, other times it's sometimes uh, it's a sometimes it's kind of a wispy male. Wispy male, uh, uh, in 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 Muppet Christmas Carol, it's it's a floaty little child of fabric. Basically, it's probably the most special effecty one I've ever seen. Probably, um, yeah. In terms of in terms of live action, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, and Ghost of Future is a big. It's like an animatronic guy in a 
Floyd, mm-hmm. you know, and he opens up like the wormhole portals and stuff. Yeah. I always thought that was so like in the trailer. I was like, whoa, you know, yeah, yeah. Kid, thinking that was so cool. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I like the way that they were handled in this movie. I thought they did the spirits quite well. Um, oh yeah. Very memorable kind of quintessential versions of, of those. Um, and, uh, when you're casting Scrooge, like, you know, Michael Caine, you have to have an actor who can be a grumpy bastard, but can also turn on the joy for the end. Yeah. <laughs> like, do the, and Michael Caine can do both. Um, one, one actor, like, who played Scrooge, who I thought did, was not very good, was Patrick Stewart. Did you ever see the Patrick Stewart? Christmas Never did. Show. What year is that? Oh gosh, that's like ninety nine, I think. Hmm. Patrick uh, Stewart. Yeah, Patrick Stewart did one in nineteen ninety nine, and you would think uh, Stewart would be good for the role, but he's really not. Like it just for some reason, you know, Stewart kind of has this paternal grandfatherly quality. Yeah, he's not good at being an asshole. Yeah, it just he didn't really sell it very well. That's probably my least favorite of the Christmas Carol movies I've seen. That's that's yeah. one that I was like, you know, I, I didn't really find much to enjoy about it. Yeah, I'm looking at ah, I'm looking at some of the screenshots here. Uh, yeah, I, I recognize the poster now that I see it. It's him about to beat the shit out of somebody. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, but it looks like uh, it looks like uh, the the Ghost of Christmas Past is a weird androgynous long-haired blonde person and then it looks like the christmas future it looks kind of silly but i like it it looks like a halloween ornament it's got two glowy eyes yes yes <laughs> <laughs> oh man. i have to watch that one yeah I want, I, I want, even if it's not good i watch it yeah like, oh yeah i would gonna, yeah absolutely ghosts, watch it you know yeah watch it it's uh it's it's you know i i'm always game to watch a, a christmas carol adaptation you know once yeah at least at least let's uh let's keep talking about if there's anything else to talk about with muppets christmas carol before we jump on to the other guys yeah 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 of course i was just bringing up uh my cocaine scrooge um <laughs> my cocaine. <laughs> but um you know this one it it leaves out a few things like ignorance and want in the book. Do we get Marley's death in the book? We, well, the opening of the, of the book is uh, Marley, Marley was, was dead, dead to begin with. Yeah, yeah. We don't actually get his death. He's just a corpse already. Cause I watched, uh, I watched one recently where they show, they have a Christmas past with his, when he passes away. And I was going, I haven't seen that before. Which one is that one? That was in the Alistair Sim one. Oh, interesting. Yeah. They go way more like most of the runtime is Christmas past in that movie. They go pretty far into it. Um, it has more stuff than in some of the uh, usually. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember how it is in the book, but like the Christmas past in the movies tends to end when Scrooge and Belle break up. You know, that's yes. kind of when it's usually a- in the cinematic versions of them. Yes, I think in the book as well. I, I, oh, who is that? Oh, that's me. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I'm very fam- I mean, I should be very familiar with the book. I've read it enough times, but it's just one of those things that since you watch so many adaptations of it, it gets conflated in your head and you don't yeah. know what's in the book or it, what it is. It's hard to remember yeah. what's in the because I, I read it a while back, but I just haven't. It's one of those things where all the different versions and adaptations and plays that i've seen they all mix around yeah yeah i just it's hard to tell what's the prose and where where did you see this and and you know uh when i was watching the jury we're getting into this unless we're uh, uh unless we're not unless we're done talking about muppets well, was there anything um, else you wanted to bring up about it uh you know not really uh it's 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 just uh it's the christmas carol with a new coat of paint it's the muppets uh you know it's we talked about Michael Caine. He's very, he's probably one of the better Scrooges. Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, I, 
like have my top five Christmas Carol adaptations, and I'd put this one at the top for me. Um, not necessarily the best, but it's the one that I I will go to every year. You know. Well, yeah, that's partially because some of these things are quite long for some reason, whereas this is a very clean ninety minutes. Oh yeah. Same with the Alistair Sim one. That one's like under ninety minutes. It's a yeah, quick in and out. The one I really like is the Albert Finney one, but it, yeah, it's closing in on two hours. Yeah, that on my top five is number four. Uh, that one is ha- the songs are great, but again, yeah, it's one I'm probably not going to watch every year because it's much longer than. It's quite long, yeah. You know, uh, Mickey's Christmas Carol. What's great about that is the economy of it. It's twenty five minutes. It's literally twenty five minutes long. <laughs> it's 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 over before you know it. Yeah, it goes you know, through maybe it to a quick. fault. But by the way, um, I think it's really funny in that movie. Oh, I what's that actor's name? Uh, in in that movie, they get that Scottish actor to play Scrooge what's his name okay uh alan young is it yes alan young he was in the time machine and he's got that voice you know (laughs) oh spirit haunt me no longer but i thought it was really funny that they made scrooge scottish (laughs) uh good point yeah well is alan young the same actor that that uh voices scrooge in ducktales sounds i don't Sounds similar enough. He me. might have. He was still alive. Let's see. Was he on DuckTales? Um, oh, wow. he's He did a ton of voice work. Yes, he was. He was Scrooge on DuckTales. 97 yeah, it sounds, episodes. It sounds similar enough. Yeah, he only died in 2016. That's oh, crazy. Wow. He's been, he played Scrooge for a long time. Wow, that's crazy. I wouldn't have thought that. <laughs> he did he was also on the Smurfs. <laughs> 49 episodes. My goodness. Were um, you aware that Alistair Sim played Scrooge again? Yes, in an animated version. Yeah, 71. Yeah. Um but yeah, Alan Young, that that Scrooge voice he did is just iconic. But I mean, that's just his voice. You <laughs> know, it's just how he yeah. talks. It, yeah, the Christmas Carol, the Mickey's Christmas Carol, which is an odd title for the film because Bob Cratchit is not the main character of yes. the film, but um, and Mickey is playing Bob Cratchit. Uh, uh, it gets pretty intense during the uh, uh, during the future uh, uh, future segments. Uh, I always appreciate it when Scrooge goes to hell during the ghost of Christmas yeah. future. Whenever I always love the the Christmas Carol adaptations that go hard. That end, yeah. end with Scrooge going, <laughs> being sucked into the lake of fire. <laughs> they do that in Mickey's Christmas Carol, uh, but they've done that in a few of them where it's like, "This is how it all ends, Scrooge. You're damned," you know. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 damn intense. Uh, uh, they, he pulls the uh, uh, future pulls back the hood to reveal Peg Leg Pete, mm-hmm. and he pushes, shoves him into the grave. And, and he's laughing hysterically. Yeah, yeah. He's smoking. Uh, he always he has a cigar. Cigar. And uh, yeah, yeah. The coffin down below opens up, and it's a fiery hell. Yes. You know, you know, John Lasseter was one of the animators on that. Oh, really? Yeah, I can see that. Very young John Lasseter. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's eighty three. Uh, when that came out i have a vhs of it um and it's weird because the vhs advertises a behind the scenes look after the feature Mm -hmm. and it's not on that tape so i'm assuming at some point uh the tapes got switched out or something that's interesting The the only thing i can think of i have it on dvd and it comes with the uh the other Disney cartoon Christmas cartoon small one. Do you ever see small one? I don't even know what that is. It's it's uh it was when Don Bluth was at Disney when he was kind of the guy. So it's got mm. that Don Bluth look. Yeah. Um, but it's about this kid. He's got a he has a small donkey named Small One that he loves, but they can't keep him because he's 
kind of a burden. He's not, he doesn't work. He's too little to work hard. And so this kid has to go take him to the, uh, to market and everybody's trying to swindle him and like take the donkey from him Mm -hmm. and uh, like give him not very much money or, you know, whatever. When is Jesus figuring into this? Yes. I was about to say, so the, the, the the people he ends up selling the donkey to are Joseph and Mary. And so that's like the, Oh, it's a sweet movie. Yeah. Uh, like, cause that reminded me immediately of that Rankin Bass film. Um, well, there's two. They have they have two donkeys. They have the long eared donkey or whatever the hell it's called, and then they have uh, the little drummer boy. Yes, which is a really intense piece of work. <laughs> um, but it's very good too, and it's short. It's mm-hmm. shorter than the usual hour long Rankin Bass claymation or stop motion or whatever. Yeah, those Rankin Bass movies would go hard. You know, <laughs> the last yeah. unicorn and. The last unicorn. Yeah. There's so many too that I've never even seen, and I'm always perplexed as like that exists. Like there's a there's Rudolph's shiny new uh, shiny new year or whatever it's called. Oh with, yeah, with with the uh, baby new year and old father time. Yes, like, what? I forgot about that. Oh my there's god. There's a whale. I saw that on TV like five years ago. I was like, what is which one is this one? Is this the Fourth of July one? Is this you were that a Santa Claus, and then I looked it up, and I'm like, "What? <laughs> I don't know." There's a lot of strange ones out there. Yeah, um, that didn't get a lot of airtime, I guess, or whatever. But uh, yeah, Alistair Sim, seventy-one, the animation version. There's also an animated one from sixty-nine that has the most gnarliest Jacob Marley you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> It's like a fiery ghost, and it's scary as hell. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. at that one right here. Christmas Carol, 1969. Um, there was one from 2001 that Nick Cage was in. An anime what? One. Yes. <laughs> Let me see if I can find it here. Christmas Carol, the movie. No. Yes. Yes. Christmas Carol, the movie with Simon Callow, Kate Winslet, and Nicolas Cage. And it oh, looks like, one, okay. and it looks like one of these like, I don't know. It's I can't tell if it's like a Japanese American co-production. I'm just saying next the animator, the director's name is like Japanese, but he could be. It has that look. It had a slightly anime style. Oh, Nick Cage plays Jacob Marley. Okay. Which is that's on that's on character. Yeah, I'd buy that. Kate you know, Winslet really... is Bell. Hmm? Kate Winslet is Bell. Yeah. Beth Winslet is fan, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> Kate Beth Winslet. I didn't even know this woman had a sister. Yeah. Um, what is it that about the Christmas Carol that is so endearing, you think? I have my own theory. Um, I think it... That's a that's a really great question. It's I probably think there's... the most one of the most adapted films, excuse me, adapted pieces of work ever. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it has something to do with, you know, the way a kind of a, a person looking at their life and kind of getting that chance to sort of right the ship, maybe. Um, I think it 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 kind of reminds people of things that are important in life. I don't know. I I don't really have anything that doesn't sound like complete nonsense. <laughs> well, I don't think that sounds like complete nonsense. That's a good point. Yeah, a redemption story. Those are always popular. Um, obviously, it, I, I I certainly believe it's that. I think it's like tenfold. It's like it's it's a number of things that I'm not even going to express right now because I can't even think about them. But it's certainly that. It's certainly the, you know, anything Christmas is automatically going to kind of shoot to the top. Uh, yeah. uh, anything Christmas related. Um, I think it's Dickens's prose is a big factor. Yeah. Because it's so memorable. It, there's so many good lines and memorable lines. It's the same thing with Tombstone. Uh, Tombstone, I honestly, I don't, we've talked about it at length, I think. Tombstone is is not a good Western. Mm-hmm. Um, but the reason it's endearing to a lot of guys, it's a guy movie. The reason it's endearing to a lot of guys is because of all the fabulous dialogue. Yeah. It's so quotable. Mm -hmm. And, uh, a Christmas Carol, which is a much better piece of work, uh, is very quotable. Yeah. And 
you'll notice when it's adapted, there's so many lines of dialogue that it's not going to touch. Yeah. You know, that it's not going to mess with. This is going in, you know, yeah. like, you know, you're a bit of cheese, you know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a bit of gravy. Uh, there's, there's more, gra- bl- there's more gravy than a grave of you. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I was like, oh, I'm going to bungle it up if I say it, but, uh, you know, God bless us, everyone. There's all these, I see a, a crutch without an owner, you know, like all these crutch without an owner, a lot of the Scrooge lines too. Well, obviously gravy grave that one's, but the big one, obviously humbug, but outside of humbug you have, um, uh, well, if they better die than, well, if they're going to die, they better do it and decrease the surplus population. And, you know, is it is so Scrooge was Canadian, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. If I were to go to work or even out here, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. But if I, if I were to go up to somebody and say they're euthanizing people in Canada, it is, it is the past week. It was the number one cause of death. They'd look at me like I was fucking nuts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know that you, they'd be like, I was, er, old Eric's been listening to Alex Jones again. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. Listen to some crazy right wing conspiracy listening stuff. Listening to something crazy, some yeah. misinformation. Yeah, despite the fact that New York Times did an article on it, it was an opinion piece, and I I didn't read it, but I'm going to assume it was pro euthanasia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, you never know. Um, but yeah, that's I couldn't. A- I wanted to read it, but I couldn't. Thanks, paywall. New York and, uh, Times. Yeah. Oh, I know that happens all the time. With I, well, I guess I'm not reading this piece. Um, yeah. The, well, uh, you won't get your message out. Fuck you. Yeah, I I know. I don't understand it. I mean, who's going to want to? want to subscribe to the times online please Um, whatever slimes the new york slimes slimes man i could choose i have a better choice of words for the new york times but i won't on this podcast (laughs) Um, uh but oh and uh you know but yeah i think a lot of those lines they're just they're sacred you can't touch them because they're perfect like what shall we put you down for nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. and you know his cousin coming in and merry christmas and you know uh you know telling him tell, telling him like you know he needs to get into the christmas spirit inviting him over for dinner that there's whole just, exchange the nephew yeah. yeah and i also think there's a certain element to i think the ghosts provide like almost a, there there's almost like a horror element too. like you can get kind of dark with it with the ghost of christmas future you know so it it kind of it has a lot of heartwarming stuff but it has scary stuff in it too like you know the idea of these people dividing up his his possessions these kind of nasty vultures picking over the corpse yeah. of scrooge's possessions you know it's like disturbing stuff to think about um well, that and but it is for first and foremost a ghost story. I mean, the 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 book is a scary story. Um, with like a lot of, a lot of ghost stories, which is a tradition in, in the UK to uh, tell ghost stories during the Christmas season. Um, a lot of ghost stories that aren't even Christmas related, although there's quite a number of them. Um, there's a hint of sentimentality, no matter how dark they get. And obviously, this movie's or or this book and and the subsequent movies made out of them uh, out of it uh, are all sentimental yeah uh, i mean it's it's steeped in sentimentality and and the message is the message is heavy handed is pre- pretty much the only criticism i can really give on th- the work um it's very heavy handed but um but told so well and so brilliantly that it doesn't really matter um so yeah i mean it is first and foremost a, a scary story uh, uh, where was I going with this? But yeah, no, the, the movie, the movie is very, uh, it goes hard when it has to go hard. And there's moments in the book that so many of the, of the adaptations don't even touch. Like yeah. the wailing ghosts outside when Marley goes out the window and look to see me no more. And uh, Scrooge looks upon the outside outside of his window and he looks down and there's hundreds of ghosts flying in the air, lost souls. And the Alistair he, Sim one does that scene. The Alistair Sim one does that very well. Um, others hint at it, others just ignore it. Uh, and probably less to do with the intensity of it and more to do with just money. Yeah, it's a special effect shot. Yeah. 
and you know the 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 sim one does it very simply like we're going to just shoot some stuff and fade it on top you know yeah. the same way they do marley's face on the knocker it's a like you know a film effect that's as old as you know yeah LEAs, you know so. yeah oh definitely the well the, be the best one that i've seen is the albert finney one uh they go hard on that one with the lost souls there's even a little musical number and it's right yeah um another one that they they tend to again all special effects so it's got to be money reasons um another one they normally don't do is there's a fourth well not counting lost souls there's a fourth a fifth ghost uh in the book in the novel Scrooge, after seeing Ebony, uh, after seeing uh, Jacob Marley on the doorknob on the knocker, he goes into his the building and goes up the steps to his apartment. And in the hallway, there's a big foyer, and a ghost hearse rides through the living room mm. area of the foyer. And sometimes they do that; most of the time, they don't. Mm -hmm. um, again, another special effects shot. Um, I, you know, there's a. Uh, there's a, a a pernicious little complaint or a pernicious little bit of negativity about the story that I've only ever encountered in real life once. I've encountered it more online. Uh, but apparently, I don't know how true this is. I'm going to assume it is. Let's just say it is for the sake of argument. Dickens apparently didn't give two shits about this book at all. He did it for money. Really? Uh, yeah. And, uh, but... I've only ran into one on, online. You find a number of people that do this, but I've only ran into one asshole in real life that uses it as a, like a, like a flex, like, Oh, you know, Dickens, Dickens didn't care about that story. He thought it was a piece of shit and he did it for money. And, and he's just like, and I'm like, so who cares? The result I, is, is writers is, are wrong about their own work. <laughs> yeah. The result or, is what it is. The result sometimes is they do their best work when they're just doing it for some money. Sometimes, you know, it's just inspiration strikes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the result is you have a piece of work that's the most adapted, you know, book of all time, pretty much. At least it's up there. And at least in the Western world. And uh, and it's a great piece of work. And I think we've spoken highly of it for the past you know, 10 minutes and why it's so good and why it's so endearing. So who cares? Like, that was, you know, what do I give a shit about what some dead guy thought about his work? <laughs> yeah. I don't care. Oh, yeah. People are always looking for that kind of big those thing. are actual contra those are the contrarians we're talking about yeah those are those are real contrarians yeah um <laughs> where they they have to it, oh so i see so you're enjoying something let me try to put a stop to that <laughs> exactly yeah i'm a contrarian by nature i just wish more people would it's frustrating that people don't agree with me more exactly often. exactly yeah. you know uh um, but yeah what, what an idiot um and they they always have the the rod the, mm, they got the they got the oh I gotcha it's like no oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. They've, they've got got the, the, the Bill Maher smugness they've got the little Reddit thing comp popping out of their head you know <laughs> <laughs> little antenna yeah. um Ugh. but uh so for my top five Christmas Carol adaptations Oof. number one is Muppet Christmas Carol okay number two is Mickey's Christmas Carol nice. Okay, this is a new edition. I just saw this one, but I saw the Alistair Sim, A Christmas Carol. I think it's a great straight adaptation. Just this is A Christmas Carol. It's economical. It's memorable. The Alistair Sim is a great Scrooge. Um, I thought it was really good. Number four is Scrooge with Albert Finney. One thing I love about that movie is Albert Finney's really young in it. Mm -hmm. And he's very believable as an old man. Sure is, yeah. But I would say, when I watched that movie, I was like, I could totally see Adam Sandler playing this part the exact same way. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. <laughs> Just, yeah. I was like, oh, Adam Sandler, he could play Scrooge. Um <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> yeah i could you're right i could see that i'm surprised uh, i'm really surprised they haven't done that with him yeah i mean that seems like something he would do uh maybe he's too jewy yeah maybe i maybe he, he, maybe he's the one that puts the kibosh on that you know <laughs> somebody's had to come up to him and say you know you gotta play scrooge and, 
and he's he puts the kibosh off to the kibbutz. <laughs> yeah, off to the kibbutz. Yeah, maybe maybe they 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 asked him way back when, and he was just like, "No, nah, I'll do eight crazy nights." No, I'll do I'll do do uh, what's it called? Click. <laughs> well, it's true. It's the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, so, kind of. I mean, it's like he he's able to fast forward through his life and sees how he wastes it. And that's another movie where he has like a ten for a wife. Yes, he's got Kate. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah, getting it's... to the point where I'm just like, is he doing this on purpose? Yeah. <laughs> he's living vicariously through his characters. He's always got like Jennifer Aniston and uh, Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. <laughs> Click was uh, what's your face from those werewolf vampire Kate movies? Kate Beckinsale, yeah. Kate Beckinsale. Selma Hayek. Selma uh, <laughs> was in the, the grown up <laughs> films. And they sexualized the shit out of her. Yeah. Wearing a bikini and stuff. Like they know what's up. <sighs> um speaking of christmas and the sexualization of women <laughs> well and for my number five noticed... hmm? oh i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah no please go ahead oh my number five this is one we haven't brought up scrooge duh with bill murray bill murray uh i've seen i've only seen that in parts so i can't really say anything about scrooge uh, like oh, i want to watch it whole. yeah 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 i want to isn't the the future isn't it like a basically a garbage bag <laughs> <laughs> it it takes place in basically Scrooge is a TV executive in New York, mm-hmm. although he's not called Scrooge. He's his name is Frank yeah. Ross, but uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, he's just a selfish prick and he gets visited by the ghosts, one of whom the ghost of Christmas past is played by David Johansson from the New York Dolls. Oh, the taxi driver, yeah, and yeah, yeah. apparently. <laughs> What is it? This isn't funny. I shouldn't be laughing. But like the bass player of the New York Dolls was like at home and Scrooge came on TV and he hadn't seen it. And he was just like, oh, Bill Murray. I like a good Bill Murray movie. <laughs> and then he, he and like David Johansson, like there was a lot of bad blood between them. Really? And, uh, on set? No, like just in their days in the Dolls, you know. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this Go is ahead. Arthur Killer Kane, the bass yeah, player yeah. from the Dolls. Scrooge comes on and he's like, "Oh, I love, I love Bill Murray. I'm gonna watch Scrooge." <laughs> and then I see. this is this isn't funny. I shouldn't be laughing, but he sees David Johansson come on, and he he's like, "Honey," he calls his wife in the room and he punches her in the face and then jumps out the window <laughs> of his like several stories high apartment (laughs) did he make it he lived and that was when he kind of hit rock bottom and he was like okay i'm going to rehab and then he became a mormon i was gonna ask it's like so drugs are related to this story right like who does that but he had like such a he had like a mental breakdown when he saw scrooge because david johansson (laughs) was in it (laughs) lost his mind (laughs) <laughs> it's just the worst reaction someone can have to a movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what's funny about it. That's that's screw somebody felt so passionately about that movie. He just or one element of the movie that he was punch, so punch his wife. so triggered by it. But <laughs> but he's overseeing like a a, a oh, production man. of a Christmas Carol that's going to be live on TV with Buddy Hackett as Scrooge. <laughs> I know Lee, Lee Majors has like a Christmas action movie. Yes. yes, like he's like mowing down people at Santa's workshop, and Robert Goulet has Christmas on the Bayou. <laughs> so <laughs> there's alligators swimming. Around. <laughs> but uh, one of the great things is uh, Bill Murray fires Bobcat Goldthwait, who, when he at, in the throes of being visited by these spirits, Bobcat's coming to the office with a shotgun and trying to kill him. <laughs> while while he's being visited by the ghost of christmas future (laughs) um but it's it's a fun movie it's one of those movies that i heard that bill murray and richard donner butted heads a lot on the set and i think bill murray was just kind of in bill murray mode where he's just kind of doing whatever he wanted and so the movie does kind of feel like it it doesn't feel very cohesive but it's Mm. good it's funny um i don't think murray has good relationships with anybody no he's you know i watched a thing about the making of ghostbusters and 
Dan Aykroyd, Ivan Reitman, all these people are talking about Bill Murray and they talk about him like, you know, well, Bill's, he just does what he wants. You know, they just, they didn't, they, they seem to be really tense talking about him. Yeah. Um, Yeah. There's something there. And, uh, he always seems to have trouble recently. He's just been canceled. From, yeah. At first I didn't think anything of it cause they didn't tell me what the incident was. They kept it from the public for so long. And then recently they revealed it. I'm like, well, okay. I, I could see why somebody felt uncomfortable. And with it's that. something I could see him doing too. Oh, guaranteed. But yeah. But you know, who's never been canceled for being a creep on set. Scrooge. That's right. <laughs> What do you think of the George C. Scott one? Speaking of, it's it's okay. Uh, I'm not in the best of moods uh, this particular uh, period because I just I'm not I'm not feeling too good. I've had, I've had like two restless nights, um, so that might have figured into my thinking of it. It's fine. It's a perfectly fine. It's 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 lacking warmth, yeah. which is a problem. Um. Uh, uh, and that's really all I can really say about it. One it of, goes hard where it needs to go hard. Um, want and and um, ignorance. Yes, thank you. Ignorance and want are in there. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's just it's just lacking warmth. Uh, I'm not sure if George C. Scott is the is the pillar of warmth, even when at the end when it calls upon him to be so. Well, uh, and that's, that's the I'm issue. gonna say, this is one of those cases where the casting looks great at yes. first where i'm like george c nobody plays a grumpy bastard better than george c scott he if yeah. you look up grumpy bastard in the dictionary you're gonna see george c scott you know but <clears throat> i think one two things hurt it one is scott doesn't exactly exude warmth like you said i think you nailed it on the head two he has he has kevin costner syndrome with his british accent you yes. know, it kind of comes and goes, and frankly, it gets in the way of him giving a good performance because it seems like he can't decide if he wants to do it or not because he's not very good at doing it. And yeah. I kind of wish he had just been grumpy American George C. Scott and just like forget it. I would have preferred that. And I honestly, before he even opened his mouth, I thought he's just going to do George C. Scott voice. He's not going to pull an, an English accent. So I was a little surprised when he did because I would have accepted it. I would have accepted it. Yeah, I, I I would have accepted it too, and I feel like I feel like he just feels very. I don't. I feel like he's very un underconfident here. Like it doesn't seem like he's sure of himself in his performance. Did you notice a number of times? Did you notice him staring off screen in the middle of a fairly lengthy monologue? He's reading cue cards. <laughs> no, but. You know, I, I I'll have to look for that, but I'll bet I'll bet you're right. Yeah, his yeah. eyes like there was several points where I was just like, oh my god, he's reading cue cards just off screen. His his eyes are darting. He's doing like one of these. Here's the 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 the, the eye line. He's doing one of these. You know, like, oh, it is a ponderous chain, and you know that that's a, that's a line from. Well, Jacob that, that's Mondes probably one reason his performance isn't very confident. Is yeah, you know, I just I just felt like something was off watching him. So yeah, um, you know, yeah, it wasn't the whole time. It was just a few moments where I was just like, "Holy crap, he's he's pulling a Marlon Brando right." Now. Which, funny connection, that one's directed by Clive Donner, who edited the Alistair Sim, uh, really, nineteen fifty one one. Yep. Wow, have that on your resume. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I edited this classic one. Let me direct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah. I, 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 I'll, I'll, I promise I know where to put the cue cards for. Yeah, that that might have been the prerequisite <laughs> that that he, that he had uh, edited the original one. Um, what's the earliest version? There must be a silent version from the teens there, or something. There, there is. In fact, uh, one of the guys who um directed, I think the first full length, the first feature length one. Uh, was called a right the right to be happy and it was direct it starred uh rupert julian as scrooge and yeah. he directed it and he was the guy who directed phantom of the opera with uh lon cheney that's probably even though it's not part of the horror the the monster cycle of the next decade yeah phantom of the opera 
with Lon Chaney is probably the best Universal monster movie. Yeah, and this one is a Universal picture. There. So, oh, oh uh, Right to Be Happy is a Universal film. Yes, they just started because I think that studio opened in 1915. Yeah. So this was this was. Uh, oh yeah, early. I have seen clips of this. Okay. And uh, there's some shorts like Scrooge or Marley's Ghost from 1901. Uh, so that would be the earliest, probably. Yeah, and I've even seen some um, Magic Lantern uh, show uh, slides of Christmas Carol. I've seen some that are painted, but I've seen some that are photographs where they were uh, glass slides of photographs where they staged scenes from A Christmas Carol, photographed them, put them on a Magic Lantern slide. And, you know, you'd have a show to go with it, but you'd get this big right. projection of Scrooge with the ghost of Christmas yet to come or whatever. Um, so it's been I went, to a, I went to a Magic uh, Lantern show uh, in October. Really? Yeah, yeah. It was uh, very interesting. I mean, it's mostly a slideshow. Yeah. Um, uh, very interesting. There was, I, th I believe, two ghost stories. Well, no, there was a ghost story. Um, I seem to recall it's called The Yorkshireman and the Irish ghost. And that was a, a spooky little, little tale with a, uh, with a pretty hard hitting, uh, hard hitting ending. I think it's the Yorkshireman and the Irishman's ghost. I'm pretty certain. And then they did the Raven for the finale. Mm -hmm. So not a ghost story, but, um, uh, and then in between there was like these little fun little vignettes with circus performers and they, you know, they move once it's the same, the same slide with a tiger going through a hoop you know yes. but it's it just it starts here and then it's over there yep. and that's, it was neat um the things people did uh before the internet yes <laughs> and tv i guess um well are there any other christmas carol adaptations we didn't talk about that we want to talk about there's so many oh, oh and the gosh, one yeah. the one the netflix one by the way i brought up i thought it came out a couple years ago, it came out this year, and it's a remake of Scrooge with Albert Finney. Really? Yeah, it's an animated remake of that musical. Did they get Albert Finney? Oh, no, Albert Finney died recently, right? Yeah, he's dead. Um, okay. No, it's got some... So it's got... The, how is it a remake, though? Because we're talking about an adaptation of a book because it's not... Because that was a musical. So, a... So, the mus so the songs are the same? Yeah, that's what I'm... That's what I'm under... That's what I'm okay. getting from this. Okay, very interesting. All right. Um, yeah, it says it's uh, adapted from the 1970 film Scrooge, which has the same songs by the same okay. uh, composers. The production of Scrooge is amazing, especially when he leaves his counting house to go to his house before all the events start happening. He's all that long walk with the song. Mm -hmm. um, I hate people. I hate people. I and then also Father them. Christmas. Father <laughs> Christmas. So it's two songs, actually. There might be a third because I think Cratchit and the kids are looking at toys or something that they can't afford. But um, that long sequence of him walking, everybody going to their respective houses, uh, check out the production value on that. The studio mm -hmm. space, uh, they even do like a little pier river type thing at one point. It's it's amazing. Yeah, it's it's a great movie. And I love my favorite number is Thank You Very Much. <laughs> Thank You Very Much is the best song in, in yeah. the film. Yeah. It's oh. just hilarious like you know the the look at the future is rarely so funny in these movies usually it's really dark but you get all these that like scrooge thinking everyone's celebrating his life and they're happy he's dead yeah, <laughs> yeah. So funny um the um oh that that's the ghost of christmas present song is is very good too um uh, i like life yeah i think yeah, that's a good one um, but yeah, if you if you've never seen that, that's one I highly recommend checking out. Just speaking to the audience, Scrooge with Albert Finney. It's got Alec Guinness in it too, as Marley. As a good Marley, usually Marley, that's a that's a a role that I think is a sort of coveted role by a lot of actors mm -hmm. for one reason or another. Um, because yeah, they usually get some top tier actors to portray that that character. Yeah, like Goofy. Correct. <laughs> He falls down the stairs. I was thinking, what, how was Scrooge so successful going into business with Goofy? You know, good point. <laughs> um, 
Well, what would you rate uh, Muppet Christmas Carol? That is really an odd choice, actually. Go- going into business with Goofy. Um, is there anybody else they could have picked for that role? Um, I know that they had to shoehorn in one of their most popular characters. So yeah. But, um, Chris, Muppets Christmas Carol. I mean, this is going by uh, decades long feelings on the film. So I would rate it for what it is an eight. That's what I gave it as well. Out of 100. Yeah. <laughs> Out of eight one hundred, yeah, yeah I I gave it an eight as well. I think it's I think it's as good as Christmas Carol adaptations get. Yeah. Um, but you know, if you've watched that one a few times and you want another musical one, uh, Scrooge is well worth checking out. Big production value, great songs, great actors. Yeah, sorry I don't have a top five, but I suspect that um, that use yours and eyes would be very similar. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just, I thought that would be fun to make a top five. Um, you know, some that I don't care for, I don't care for the, uh, Patrick Stewart one. Um, I think the, the one with George C. Scott, I've only seen parts of it. Uh, I haven't finished the whole thing I'm going to, but I feel that one's pretty flawed and, uh, I'm not a big fan of the Jim Carrey, Robert Zemeckis one. Either. We didn't talk about that. Yeah. Um, that's two Robert Zemeckis 3d Mm -hmm. whatever movies that he did polar express and then and then that Uh, one several years yeah but that's not christmas related yeah oh yeah 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 i like that one actually when i saw it in the theater yeah me too Um, i don't i don't know if i'd be into it now but um uh back when angelina jolie was was a was hot stuff (laughs) yeah it's a long time ago um uh yeah christmas carol i liked it in the theater the jim carrey one um i don't like jim carrey as as an actor or i don't know him personally but i don't like him as a person either (laughs) (laughs) um uh i think what i think about jim carrey is he's very talented at what he does there's nobody else that can do jim carrey but jim carrey hence the pest Mm -hmm. with john leguizamo yeah when they tried to do kind of an ace ventura type thing with him um Jim Carrey is very good at at the things that he does. I I've always had an aversion. I remember um, Pet Pet Detective. That was my the first. That was my introduction to Carrey. Um, Pet Detective came out on my birthday in 1994, and I didn't get it. I thought it was just like I'm creeped out by this man child. I'm creeped out by this guy. I I. I I, I almost I didn't think of this as a kid, but now years later I'm thinking, oh my god, can you imagine the the blue collar guys on the set, the crew with cigars, the c- cigarettes hanging out of their mouths, having to put up with this freaking lunatic, <laughs> like him going off script probably and doing what it was just like. They probably thought, oh my god, what a giant piece of shit this is going to be, <laughs> and this is going to bomb. And lo and behold, it was huge, big numbers, huge. Uh, started his career. Carey had. A very busy uh, year in 1994. He had three ginormous hits. He had Pet Detective. That summer, he had The Mask. Oh, my gosh. And then at the end of the year, to top it off, he had Dumb and Dumber. That's big. That's 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 a run in one year that'll put you on top. Exa- and it did. Mm-hmm. You couldn't get away from him for years. And uh, no, yeah, like it's it is it is an impressive run of of hits and the quality of the films, you know, whatever you want to say about that. But I've never understood the, the, the cult of, I mean, I actually do understand the cult of Carrie, but I, I never liked him. Uh, He's, he just creeps me out at at that time. He creeped me out. Um, And now I've been vindicated (laughs) to some degree, but uh, uh, why did I bring this up? I went to go see the Jim Carrey Christmas Carol. I liked it in the theater. A lot of flaws. There was a lot of problems with it. Um, particularly, it's one of the one of the incarnations of that book that go really hard. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I appreciate that. Uh, but it it loses it in points where it's just like, why are you going to drop the ball now? For example, right after into uh um, ignorance and want that sequel sequence which is really rough even for a pg rated movie 
you get the Ghost of Christmas pa- uh, uh, Future. And all of a sudden, it turns into a Disney cartoon. Mm-hmm. You know, Jim Carrey gets shrunk down to a pea, and he's slipping and sliding everywhere. I, I'm assuming they did it so that the kids won't completely freak out mm-hmm. after a barrage of, of, of pretty scary visuals. But that was not the time to pull back. No. Uh, that was to go, that was the time to go even harder. Yeah. And um, I think that was a major failing. And you don't want your third act to be a failure in the eyes of the audience. No, no. That's, and especially that part of the story, it's, it's the scariest part, you know, it's supposed to be, yeah. You got to deliver that. It's supposed to be. Um, Um, what did you not like about it? It, it didn't make much of an impression on me. I also don't like, um, I don't like Zemeckis's Uncanny Valley CGI animated yeah. stuff. It just doesn't like, you know, Beowulf was fine. I'm, I'll never go back and watch it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's I just, best to remain that in 2000. Yeah. I, I would imagine it's a, it has not aged well. Um, and I just, you know, I just don't think those, those CGI animated movies, they, they feel they're just there's something about them that's like intangible to me a lot of times i liked all three of those i i understand exactly where you're coming from i'm able to look past that somehow in the way that i'm not able to look past cgi in a live action movie yeah I'm not sure why that is because i guess whatever it's a different medium but i liked polar express when i saw it and what was it oh four mm-hmm. uh i liked beowulf and i liked that I, I think all that stuff i could do without watching ever again probably yeah. um well, is there any other uh, adaptations we want to mention before we get out of here? I wanted to talk about Beverly D'Angelo and those va- vacation movies. I was going to make a point <laughs> of that earlier. But um, no, I think we've covered pretty much everything. Um, yeah. Obviously, it would take you, uh, if you sat if you sat down and watched everything without a bathroom break, all the Christmas Carol adaptations would probably take you five days. Yeah. Be my guess. So there's still a lot that I haven't seen, but um, but I'm pretty damn comfortable with my, and I think you are too, with your our authorities on it, mm-hmm. for the most part. Um, we've probably seen more than the average bear in the same way that uh, I haven't seen all the Elvis movies, but I've I've certainly seen I've seen like about ten, so that's more than most people I would yeah. imagine. You know, there's there's so many of these that it's hard to see them all um but yeah. i think i think most of the noteworthy ones i've caught yeah definitely yeah i don't think there's anything else to talk about but the sexualization of, of beverly d'angelo it's it's weird isn't it because in vacation she's nude in the second one um she's even more overtly sexualized even though she doesn't show titty in it or something um but then christmas vac- and also in vegas vacation the fourth one she's sexualized christmas vacation no sexualization of beverly d'angelo Hmm. is is this the key to why that has endured over the others uh no probably not it's it's to do it's to do with the christmas uh, aspect of it why is it that christmas vacation in your your thinking i don't know it's never been one that i've held as particularly beloved um i just i think there's you know i think there's something about it that you know like cousin eddie all the the decorating the house there's certain things about christmas that certain stresses that it captures i think yeah um but you know there's not like a you don't get like okay another john hughes christmas movie is home alone uh home alone kind of one thing chris columbus did when he tackled that movie was he wanted to take a break from the comedy to go like what's the meaning of christmas and he wanted to have that scene in the church where uh kevin talks to the old man and they kind of discover what's important in life and you know home alone takes a second to go like this is a christmas movie here's what christmas means i think one reason christmas vacation has never really stuck with me is it never does that (laughs) um it's just kind of silliness and i think that's enough for a lot of people um 
I think it is. Well, the movie comes alive when Eddie shows up 45 yeah. minutes in or whatever it is. Um, before that, it's fine. There's plenty of moments. Um, I, I, I'll push back a little bit. I think towards the end, when everything is at pre-climax, um, he has a t- con- uh, Clark Griswold has a conversation with his father how he wanted you know the Christmas vacation for the family to be perfect and I just screwed it up and why why is it that this always happens to our family because it used to happen when I was young and you he says you know yeah it's it's I, I forget what the old man responds with but it comes close to what you're talking about but it's less to do with the holiday and what it means and more to do with how do we keep you know the festivities going without it completely tripping without tripping over ourselves yeah um so you're right there's a there's a, a heart that's lacking there mm-hmm. in uh that is very much part of home alone uh uh yeah well the reason i bring up christmas vacation mostly is because it's the past two years it's become the new christmas movie oh yeah i, I, think, it, I think i think it's been for longer than that you know um, well like i see i see raising canes Yes, like Christmas vacation ads, you know, it's, it's, you know, they're, it's sticking around, you know, it's being used for marketing again. Yeah. Yeah. And the only reason I even know what Raising Cane's is because I'm on, 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 in the Western portion of, of the United States now, but I'm sure there's no Raising Cane commercials out here in Florida, but yeah, Raising Cane's is now jumping on the Christmas vacation bandwagon. Last year, they re-released the movie. as like some big event. I'm like, wasn't this always kind of a, a cherished holiday tradition but I, I guess not not in the way that it is I now think, i think it's been, i think it has been i've always seen people sharing cousin eddie memes and <laughs> quoting it you know <laughs> there's some good stuff with that character in that movie yeah um, there is one of my favorite things is uh they're at the dinner table and clark clark is telling the kids oh kids uh, I was listening to the weather today, and they caught cam. They caught uh, footage of uh, Santa's sleigh, uh, and <laughs> and Eddie stops eating the bad turkey or whatever. Like, you serious, Clark? <laughs> <laughs> Is Christmas Vacation the one where where he goes? All right, that's enough of that. While <laughs> while driving. Or is that a different vacation? I think that must be vacation. Okay, I, I think so. The only look going back and watching those movies, they're not very good. But there's something about Clark Griswold, even though he's a completely pathetic character. So I'm not trying to throw shade at my dad, but he reminds me of my father. <laughs> but but uh, in the way, also Tim Allen reminds me of my father too. Mm. The Santa yeah. Claus. Tim, yeah, the Santa Claus. The Santa Claus. Which, I always thought uh, when they did the Santa Claus, each movie should have a different comedian killing the one beforehand. And because- <laughs> oh, hey, that's a great idea. I always thought they missed an opportunity there. That that is a missed opportunity. Oh my goodness! You know, back in '94 when that came out, I was in the theater and I saw that with my parents. Never did I think. I didn't think this way anyway. But never would I have thought that 30 years later, this dude would still be doing these freaking Santa Claus movies. Yeah. No, I I wouldn't have thought. It's nuts. It's it's almost thirty years, twenty nine years this yeah. year. Mm-hmm. It blows my mind. Is like, wait, what? Disney Plus is bringing Tim Allen back for more Santa Claus stuff? Yeah. Holy crap, man! The boomers got to get out of the way, man. It's yeah. it's it's getting disgusting. It has been disgusting. Yes. Like, give somebody else a chance. Let let. Oh. Hmm. Have Bobcat Goldthwait kill there you? There you all. go, Bobcat's coming. <laughs> <laughs> He's a boomer too. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we should revisit the vacation movies at some point. Oh yeah, um, totally. I got a lot to say about him. Uh, well, anyway, is there anything you need to plug, Eric, before we go? No, nothing. Just everybody have a merry Christmas, please. Have a merry Christmas and a happy New Year. All right. Merry Christmas, everybody.